If you have a KV Core account, you may very well be aware that you also have a website. And in this video, I wanna show you how to set up the most important parts of your website extremely quick and easy. So let's get started. My name is Josh Marriott, and I help real estate agents scale to the use of technology. And if you find this video useful, please subscribe to my channel, go ahead and hit the like button and the notifications bell to get notified of other videos like this one. So first thing you wanna do is go to your KV Core account and click on Web and IDX. This is gonna get you to this page. And if you don't have your headshot information over here, that's the first thing you wanna fix. So what we wanna do is on the top right here where it says website settings, click on manage my website settings. And then on the left hand corner, you'll see agents. So go ahead and click on agents. You should see some basic information here and you can go ahead and click on edit. Now I'm gonna pull up my website so you can see where things go as you edit them. So this is my website, it's pretty basic, but it's got a lot of functionality to it. Uh, so for example, we've got my headshot here, my name, real estate advisor. That is affected right here. You can change your name, what your title is, and your headshot, you can upload it right here. And then you'll also notice over here, I have some social media profiles attached. That's gonna be in the top right-hand corner of your website over here. And so you can add any social media profiles that you have in this area right here. So go ahead and fill this stuff out. The about me section is gonna populate at the bottom. So down here we see the about me section and that's where you fill this stuff out right here. Uh, your signature line here is actually for outgoing emails. Although not website specific, you definitely wanna go ahead and edit that while you're in there. The next thing we wanna do is click on websites. So we've got all this done. Let's click on websites. And then you're gonna click on site settings right there. Now in the site settings, your first option is the template. You have two options, hero or foundation. I prefer the look of hero, but you're welcome to select foundation to see what that looks like. Anytime you make an edit, uh, you can just go to your website and hit refresh and you can see what changed. Now over here we have the template color. You'll notice that I have a lot of black in mind. The search bars are black, the buttons are black. If you were to change the color to let's say blue and hit save, uh, you can refresh the site and see what that looks like. And you'll see everything change to blue. So you can play around with your color combinations. Now your background images, you have a lot of options that are pre-built into KV Core, and you can just check or uncheck any images that you like or don't like. And you can also upload your own images right here. These are the images that show up in the back here. This is a scrolling timeline, it will just change over time. You'll notice every time we come back to our website, it might look a little bit different. And then you can add a logo, a secondary logo. You'll notice on my website, there's two logos. We have the company logo as well as my team logo. And so I've uploaded a team logo here, which you can do as well. This other stuff isn't too important. Mandate phone, this is really important in my opinion. Now, whenever you get a lead on your website, because this is a lead generation website, and what that means is whenever someone fills out their information or creates an account, it will ask them for their name and email. If you select this trigger right here, it will also want their phone number. And I believe in getting their phone number, I think it's way more important than an email, just because you can't call anyone or text anyone without their phone number. So I do require the phone number if they're going to create an account. The next section is force lead registration. This you can get a little bit creative with as there's multiple options. So the normal option is just to require registration after one property view. Personally, I think this is way too aggressive. I actually prompt registration, but do not require it after seven property views. And what that means is when someone looks at properties, um, they can look at multiple properties. In fact, they can look at seven of them before you'll even have a pop-up screen asking for their information and they're able to click out and continue. Whereas if you require registration after your seven property views, it will have a pop-up asking for their name, email, phone number, and if they do not input it, they can no longer use the website. I'm not a big fan of that. I prefer to have people have a good experience on the website for as long as they want without actually physically requiring sign up. So I do have the pop-ups every seven views, but it's never required that they fill out their information. 
Now, if you want a lot of leads requiring it with less views, like if you're running ads on like Google pay-per-click and you're sending traffic to your website, maybe you do want to have the lead form pop up more often and require it filled out because your goal is leads, whereas my goal is just to get them to hang out my website. Website title, pretty self-explanatory. You can add your title here, the homepage or meta description. What that means is whenever someone searches on Google, if they come across your website, this is what it will say on the Google search bar. Uh, this stuff isn't as important. You can go through any of this stuff on your spare time. I'm just here to show you the most important things to go ahead and set up. Uh, if you wanna connect your Zillow reviews, you can do that right here. You can put in your Zillow screen name. I actually have my reviews turned off, but you can turn them on if you'd like uh, right here just by selecting this if you wanna hide or unhide your Zillow reviews. Uh, templates, um, you have some options here as well. You don't really need to mess with that at the beginning, it's not too important. Custom navigation, uh, this is gonna go over here, kind of in the top, we've got some buttons up here. And you can select some of that stuff as well. Let's go back to the home screen so we can see that. So in this case, I have a link that actually goes outside of my website. This might be useful for you. I have it here under other, where it says we're hiring. If someone clicks we're hiring, it will go to a different website. And so if you have anything like that that you wanna use, you can add additional links as there as well. The listing carousel, these are actually really cool. So if we scroll down, we'll see some listing carousels. I have open house, just listed, and just reduced. I think these are great. This is what the consumers want. They wanna know where the open houses are. They can see them all here on the carousel. They wanna know what was just listed. Here's the newest listings in the area and which ones just had price reductions. You can see those right here as well. And that's where you select this. You can just select some of these carousels. There's a few options here and you can put them in the order that you like. The listings, you can select or unselect anything that you don't want shown on your website. And so you can play with that as well. All right, those settings are all complete. Let's go ahead and click on web and IDX one more time. Scroll up to the top and click on widgets. Widgets. If we go to my website again, these are the widgets I have active. I have a join our team and what's my home worth. The what's my home widget is one of the ones I really like. It's a seller lead style widget. It's gonna ask them for their property address to see if they wanna know how much their property is worth. And so you can edit what widgets are visible right here. Uh, you can see some widgets. You can take a look at what they look like before you add them. So you can see, uh, this is like the default. This is probably what your website starts off looking like. Uh, but you can actually change out your widgets just listed. Uh, this is where they show. You can edit them. So here we can edit uh, you know, what the widget description is, the name of it, stuff like that. Um, but that's going to essentially change the front main part of your website right here, right below the search bar. Um, so that should set you up pretty good. You should have a nice, fairly basic website that consumers will actually like using just by following these instructions. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please smash the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video next. Let me know what you think of their algorithm.